When it comes to the Foo Fighters, one would assume that any members of Nirvana would naturally find themselves joining the ranks of this iconic rock band. However, there is one surprising reason why Krist Novoselic, the talented bassist of Nirvana, did not become a part of the Foo Fighters. It's a decision that may leave fans questioning what could have been and delving into the intricacies of the band's dynamics. Welcome to Soundscapes Rock. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content like this. Let's get started. Nirvana burst onto the music scene with a sound that was like no other, dominating the grunge movement that was just starting to gain traction in Seattle. But what if the lineup of Nirvana had been completely different from what we know and love today? Surprisingly, Chris Novoselic initially joined the project with the intention of forming a Credence Clearwater Revival cover band called The Sellouts. The band went through various lineup changes, including drummers like Aaron Burkhardt and Chad Channing before fate brought Novo Selic together with Dave Grohl, leading to the creation of the legendary trio that would become Nirvana. Throughout their meteoric rise, Nirvana faced numerous ups and downs, navigating the challenges spurred by Kurt Cobain's addiction and the resulting erratic behavior. Yet, they managed to forge an incredible legacy that undoubtedly set the stage for the future successes of both Chris Novo Selic and Dave Grohl through their individual musical endeavors. Given this background, one might assume that Nova Selic would seamlessly transition to the Foo Fighters when Nirvana came to an end. However, the surprising truth is that Christ did not join the Foo Fighters for one unexpected reason, a decision that would shape the trajectory of both bands in unique ways. After the tragic end of Nirvana, following Kurt Cobain's death, Dave Grohl found himself at a crossroads. Determined to continue making music, he embarked on a solo project, which later became the Foo Fighters. Initially, Grohl performed and recorded all the instruments himself. As he started to gain momentum and recognition, Grohl realized that he wanted to form a full band to bring his music to life on stage. He reached out to bassist Nate Mendel and drummer William Goldsmith, both of whom had previously played together in the band Sunny Day Real Estate. The trio quickly formed a tight bond and began working on what would become the Foo Fighters' self-titled debut album, released in 1995. To further solidify the lineup, Grohl decided to enlist the help of a familiar face from his time in Nirvana. Pat Smear, who had served as the touring guitarist for Nirvana, officially joined the Foo Fighters, bringing his distinctive guitar playing to the mix. The band's signature sound, characterized by catchy hooks, energetic performances, and Grohl's raw and emotive vocals, quickly resonated with audiences. Hits like Everlong, Best of You, and Learn to Fly catapulted the Foo Fighters to the forefront of the alternative rock scene. Their success was further solidified by numerous accolades, including Grammy Awards, Kerrang! Awards, and Enemy Awards. However, amidst this success, there was one notable absence. Chris Novoselic, the bassist from Nirvana. Despite their shared history, Grohl and his bandmates made a conscious decision not to collaborate with Novoselic in the Foo Fighters. The reasons behind this choice were rooted in their desire to avoid any discomfort or tensions that might arise from the past. While Novoselic did not join the Foo Fighters, he remained active in the music industry, pursuing various projects. One of his notable endeavors was forming a two-piece band called Sweet 75 with Venezuelan musician Eva Las Vegas. The band, considered American alternative rock, released a self-titled album in 1997. Although they had plans for a second album, creative differences led to their eventual split in 2000. Despite this separation, Novo Selic continued to collaborate with his musical peers. There's exciting news about his new project with the grunge supergroup Third Secret. The band, which includes grunge royalty such as Kim Thiel on guitar from Soundgarden and Matt Cameron on drums from Soundgarden and Pearl Jam, has recently released their second full-length album titled The Second Third Secret. For those interested in exploring the full album, we have a video that covers the entire The Second Third Secret album. The link can be found in the description below. 
Despite Chris Novoselic's absence from collaborating with Dave Grohl for many years, a remarkable moment occurred during the recording of the Foo Fighters' 2011 album, Wasting Light. On this album, Chris Novoselic reunited with Dave Grohl and made a guest appearance to record the bass for the powerful song, I Should Have Known. Dave Grohl explained that despite the passage of time, the connection between members of the expanded Nirvana family remains strong. When he saw Chris Novoselic, they were immediately connected by the experiences they had shared, both good and bad. He invited Chris to contribute his bass and accordion skills to I Should Have Known, a song he believed would benefit from his former bandmates' musical talents. Grohl described it as probably the darkest song on the album. Producer Butch Big also shared his experience witnessing the collaboration between Grohl and Novo Selic. He mentioned that Chris came in to play bass on the song, and while he wasn't entirely sure about its meaning, he felt that there were references to Kurt Cobain. I Should Have Known turned out to be one of the most primal and raw tracks the Foo Fighters had ever done, and Vig considered it one of the best on the album. The emotional intensity of the song was evident in Dave Grohl's powerful vocals, which were delivered passionately in what seemed like a first take, expressing a sense of catharsis and release. Nova Selleck joined the Foo Fighters on stage for a memorable bass performance during the Bumber Shoot Festival in 1997. Additionally, both Nova Selleck and Pat Smear reunited with Grohl for an encore performance of Nirvana's Marigold at a secret show in 2010. The enduring friendship between Grohl and Novo Selleck is evident, despite their respective musical paths diverging after Nirvana's dissolution. They have maintained a bond and shared appreciation for their time in the influential grunge band. Today, Novo Selleck continues to make music on his own terms, exploring new avenues while maintaining a deep connection to his musical roots. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want more stories about iconic bands and songs, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate your support and can't wait to share more intriguing content with you. 